Hi grade 11s! Okay, a quick recap video into answering Euclidean geometry problems. Now, what I want you to do is, okay, this is just a few tips before you start any paper 2 paper, exam test. Okay, what you want to do is create a formula sheet for yourself. Now, you guys know in matric you are going to get a formula sheet in your prelims and your finals. But what happens if there isn't a formula on there that you learned or there isn't every single bit of information no wait not that you didn't learn formulas on there that you learned that aren't printed on there okay like for example um in trigonometry um you know that sine the ratio sine is opposite over hypotenuse that's not written on there so you would go and add that socket door for example okay that's what i meant now under euclidean geometry after we give you guys your reading time, 10 minutes reading time, where you look through the paper, you thought about which questions you're going to answer first, etc., etc. What I want you to do is somewhere on the question paper, you're going to scribble for yourself um, this division of your Euclidean geometry theorems. Why I'm saying so is because I know some, some of you guys in the test, you know all the information, you practice properly, you studied weeks in advance, but come the test because of the stress and the anxiety and being in an exam environment, it freaks you out completely and you just blank. So if you write all of this information down when you just start your paper, even if you draw a blank, at least you can go back and still try and recall some information. Okay, Talking too much, let's go into the first thing. What I want you to do is you're going to divide it into four types. It's the center. It's the one that has to do with cyclic quads, the one that has to do with chords or segments, and the one that has to do with tangents. There's four of them. And you're going to use the strategy when you are answering your Euclidean geometry problems, okay? All right. So for the center one, quick recap. It's theorem one where it's talking about line drawn from the center to the... Uh, what is either drawn perpendicularly bisects this chord or if it was drawn from the center to the middle of the chord it means it's perpendicular okay so that's the first one the second one is uh, that i have here is that the diameter subtends a 90 degree angle okay the third one that i have here is angle at center equals two times angle at the circumference it could look like this it could look like this this angle here is two times this angle remember always the one at the circumference is the smaller one uh, it could look like this. We could give you information about this and then ask you for information about this other one here inside. Don't forget to first work out the reflex angle. So this angle over here. Then this one is two times this one over here. When I I think I did mention this in class. Is it think rainbows and smiley faces? Let's just redraw this. What I meant by that was... Yeah, if they give you information about this here, and I want information about this part, I want the rainbow, this part here. And if the picture was the other way around, smiley face. So it must match both of them like that. That's what I meant, just to help you remember. So don't forget the reflex angle. You write down that reason you work out 360 degrees minus. Then we move on to the one with quads. For quads, we know that if it's a cyclic quad, what makes something a cyclic quad? All four of its vertices are touching the circumference of the circle. And if it's if that's the case, this angle plus this angle, it's up to 180 degrees. And the same thing here, this angle and this angle, it up to 180 degrees. We say they are supplementary. Okay, the other one, based off this theorem, we get this one here. It's the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Basically, this angle on the outside made with one of the lines of the quad extended, hence exterior angle, is equal to the opposite interior one. Okay, so jump over here and this angle here. Right, so we're moving on to the next part, which is chords or arcs or segments it's the angle subtended by equal chords or angles in same segment where you can do that bow tie one where you put your fingers on there and you'll see that this angle matches up to this angle what i mean by that for anyone that got confused if you put your fingers on here okay my hand is holding the camera but if you put your two fingers on here 
and you move all the way till the top there and come back down without lifting your hand up you'll be able to make your fingers would be able to go onto these two cords and get to this angle over here and the same thing around for the other way around this angle is equal to this angle angles in the same segment or angles subtended by equal arc this arc here subtended those angles if i tell you that this is a circle and these two chords are equal you can automatically assume that this angle is equal to this angle because they are angles opposite equal chord i can even tell you let me scribble over here that i have two circles okay it's a bit rare but i'm just letting you know i can tell you these two circles are of equal size and that there's a chord over here okay and this chord subtends that angle and over here it subtends that angle this angle is actually equal to this angle because it's subtended by an equal chord don't forget that all right let's move on to tangents with tangents there's three theorems this one here looks like i say the party hat okay basically if a tangent what's a tangent again it's something that's touching the circle only once if it touches the circle if there's a line here drawn touching the circle once from this point of intersection till this point over here where it's meeting another tangent to the circle okay so from this part till this part and this part till this part they are equal in length how is this helpful it's helpful if this was a triangle okay and we know that this two sides are equal therefore this angle would be equal to this angles opposite equal side that's just one way that it could possibly help you and then we move on to this one over here where we have the center of the circle in a tangent if the line drawn from the center of the circle to the tangent meaning the radius meets with this tangent here we have a 90 degree angle and lastly, the encode, the very famous one, always questioned, okay? It says that if I have a circle and if I have a line drawn, okay, tangent, cut it in the circle once, this angle made between the line, the chord, there's a chord, and a tangent, so this angle made between here, you put your fingers over here, so on there, and it subtends this angle, therefore these two angles are equal. And the same thing on the other side, this angle here, Put your fingers comes there and it subtends those uh, i mean wait let me say this again this tangent over here and this chord this angle made over there is equal to the one that's subtended on the inside that's basically your tan chord theorem okay moving on i have a question here it's this is the diagram okay we have information please another tip we do not give you any information unless we actually want you to read it all right, so this information here says Q4 is equal to 40 degrees. That's enough. Uh, Q4, Q2 is equal to 40 degrees. So this one over here. And when you read the information, you go fill it in onto the diagram. So this angle over here is 40 degrees. It says R2 is 75. R2 over here, this one here, 75 degrees. And it says that the sides of triangle ABC, let's look for that. Here's it A. B, C. So these sides of the triangle are all tangents to the circle, meaning that they all touch in the circle only at one place. My my drawing looks really bad. I'll show you quickly what the drawing looks like here in the textbook that I copied it from. There we go. Okay. My one looks a bit worse than that. Oh, damn. Okay, there we go. All right. So it says we need to find x, y, and z. Let's see, x is, where's x? Oh, x was, yeah. I forgot to label this p, one and two. x is over here, we need to figure out x, we need to figure out y, and we need to figure out z. Automatically, I can see a triangle over here. Let's highlight this. Another tip, when you are approaching your Euclidean geometry, please don't just start writing things down. Instead, what I want you to do is you look at the question, look at what they want from you. So in this case, I want, and I know it's overwhelming at times, there's so many questions one after the other. But look at what is asked, 
okay they want me to figure out x so i highlighted this triangle i looked at x and i seen x where does it fit in it fits in this triangle now you think which one of my theorems can i use okay in this case we're using one of the theorems we learned in grade eight and nine which was sum of angles in a triangle it up to 180 degrees that's what i'm doing once you know that I can figure it out, then you start writing it down. So we figured out a game plan. Now you start writing it down, okay? So I'm going to be precise and I'm going to say in triangle PQR, okay? This is not really necessary, but I want you guys to get into the habit of making it clear to whoever's marking your paper where exactly they should be looking, okay? Because remember at the end of the year, next year, it's someone externally that's marking your final exam. So you want to make your paper look as clear and, and easy to understand as possible. And that's what we're doing here, okay? So in triangle PQR, X plus 75 plus 40 degrees equals 180 degrees. And then you have to put down a reason for every statement. we go therefore x is equal to once we figure something out we want to go fill it in so now we figured out this angle is 65 degrees Next thing we need to figure out is why. So before we start writing, we're figuring out a game plan. Okay, where is y? Here it is over here. Okay, Let's see, what do we know? We know that y and z and this angle over here all add up to 180 degrees. But that's not going to help us much, isn't it? Because we don't have information about all three of them. Instead, if I were to figure out information in this triangle, maybe it would have been a bit easier. So that means I need to figure out something in here, figure out that angle, figure out this angle over here, then I'd be able to figure out the Y. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, that's my game plan. Now, they would not give us information that these lines are tangents unless we need to use them in some way. So let's see if this line over here is a tangent. I'm going to highlight it. If this one here is a tangent, oh, they look in the same color on screen. Okay, whatever. If this one is a tangent, see the chord and the tangent meeting. I highlighted it blue and this one here dark ways. Meaning that this angle here, put your fingers on there, with the chord and the tangent and it's going to meet up and tell me that this angle and this angle are equal okay this is awesome because now i know this here is 65 degrees let's try it with the other side okay see this tangent okay see this chord this tangent and chord make up that angle put our fingers over there like that tangent and chord and it's coming back to the same one over here All right so we know that this year is 65 degrees as well so i used the chord in both cases or alternatively i could have said this one is a tangent this one is a tangent and they meet in at a common point and because they meet in at a common point this part ar is equal to aq meaning this angle is going to be equal to this angle okay do you see how you can work it out both ways all right, so I'm going to go with my first way that I used initially. So what's my game plan? I'm thinking about it first. I'm going to say Q3 is equal to X. And my reason for that is T and chord. Then I'm going to say R3 is equal to X. And again, my reason for that is T and chord. Then I'm going to say in triangle A, Q, R. 65 plus 65 plus y equals 180 degrees because of sum of interior angles of a triangle and then i'll work out y so let's do that let me say tn chord tn chord
safety. There we go. Okay. Now I need to figure out Z. Okay. There's Z over there. Let's see if we can figure out it, Z using the exact same idea that we did for Y. See, here's my tangent. My tangent and my line, my chord, make up this angle over here. If I put my fingers on there to touch the circumference, it matches up with this angle over here. So now I know that this is 40. I also, I'm going to use the other way around that I told you these two lines are equal. So let's write that way around. I know that CP is equal to CR. And my reason, oh my God, the two lines. My reason for that is line uh, tangents from common point. And therefore, that means that if this is 40, this is also 40. That's what it means. Okay, so let's write that down. I'm going to say P2. and chord Okay, and then another thing, you always say angles opposite equal sides or sides opposite equal angles. Never, ever isosceles triangle, okay? You write down isosceles triangle, immediately it's marked wrong as a reason. Okay, angles opposite the equal sides. Angles opposite the equal sides. And there we go, we are done. Now look, I tried it this way. You could have seen something while I was working with this. You might have seen an easier way to figure out these answers. By all means, you can totally do that as long as your statement and your reason are legit, proper mathematical statements and reasons and that they make sense. You shouldn't have a problem. We will still mark it correct. We'll just double check for you. Another thing, if ever you mention, like do you see here in this diagram over here, I've la or the labels were given to us as P1 and P2 and whatever. Let's say it wasn't given to us as P1 and P2. You cannot just go and name something P1 and P2 without telling me that you're naming it P1 and P2. Okay? So please be very mindful of things like that. Okay? Good luck.